Well, hello there. Glad you can join me today for one of the stories from my book Up to Mischief. In the 70s, there were many enterprising home-based dressmakers who set up business in their new HDB flats. They had with them their trusty pedal-powered Singer sewing machine, just like the miniature one I have here. Some had just moved in from the kampongs and needed time to adjust to high rise living. Well, it's time now to meet the dressmaker. The Dressmaker Singapore in the 1970s Working women began to dress up in Western fashion, especially for work. It was indeed the start of a fashionable era and dressmakers were in demand for making both chong sams and Western style dresses. Little Ruby loved watching her mum dress up for work. Mum would wear the most stylish dresses, accessorising them with pearls and shiny things and as a finishing touch, she would always apply the brightest red lipstick. Ruby just couldn't wait for the day when she had her own wardrobe of pretty dresses with matching accessories. Her wish came true when she turned eight. Ruby, would you like to go to the dressmaker and make a dress like mine? Do I get to choose the fabric and my own pattern? Ruby exclaimed. Of course, it's your dress, said mum. I will first take you to People's Park to choose the material and then you get to meet Daisy, my dressmaker. Ruby was so excited that she couldn't sleep the night before. The choice of fabrics at People's Park was amazing. From beautiful lace to shiny satin, from flowery cotton to smooth silks, Ruby couldn't help touching the different types of material to see how they felt against the skin. She made her choice of a flowery cotton fabric and Mum even took her to the haberdashery store to choose some matching buttons and trims. Then it was off to Daisy's. It wasn't a shop as Ruby had thought, but a flat at Red Hill. Daisy ran a dressmaking service from the comfort of her own home. Mum rang the doorbell, but there was no answer. She rang it again, and this time, a pattering of feet could be heard as the door opened. Out popped a white, pasty-faced woman. Ruby was a little taken aback as the woman's face was thoroughly covered by thick white powder. Mrs. Lee! Oh, this must be your daughter. Hello, little Ruby. Don't be frightened by my face. I put this rice powder on my face to make my complexion fairer, beamed Daisy from behind a scary white mask. Ruby gave a meek little smile and with all the distractions, she didn't notice that there were two chickens close to her feet as she got through the door. She was taken aback when she felt something. One of the chickens was trying to peck her toes and Ruby clung onto her mum's skirt in fright. Go away, don't frighten little Ruby. Go and peck at something else. Daisy shoot the two chickens further into the house. We used to live in the kampong, but had to leave the place to move to this high-rise flat. My mum misses the life there and keeps chickens in the house for old times' sake. How would the chickens do their toileting? And other little thoughts and questions were racing through Ruby's head. Let's see what material you have brought for your dress. Oh, this is nice and pink. Let's make something pretty for you. Here are some pattern books for children's dresses. See if you like a pattern in there, said Daisy. Ruby was getting excited again and forgot all about the poultry underfoot. She poured through the books and it was truly difficult to choose from the many options offered. She liked the one with frills and bows, but the next page showed another beautiful style with even more frills and bows. As her eyes were glued on the designs, she felt a little tingling sensation at her toes. She looked down and saw the chickens at her feet. Ruby jumped in shock and stood on the chair in fear while her mum tried pacifying her. They were biting my toes, mum, said Ruby as she started crying. They were just trying to be friendly. She doesn't bite, said Daisy, as she picked Lucky up and brought it closer to Ruby. Aren't you just trying to be friendly? Daisy then scooped up some rice from a container and gave it to Ruby. Look, Fatty and Lucky are hungry and would like you to feed them, said Daisy. They're such greedy chickens. Ruby saw that the chickens were just a little peckish without any ill intentions and came down from the chair. She held the rice in the palm of her hand the way Daisy showed her. The pecks were a little ticklish and made Ruby giggle, but she loved the sensation and began calling out their names affectionately. 
Okay, Lucky, come get your rice greens. Oh, Fatty, you have yours here. Don't take Lucky's food. When everything settled down and the dress design was chosen, it was time to go home. All through the next three weeks, Ruby waited in anticipation for the next visit to Daisy's place to get her new dress. And of course, to see her new friends, Lucky and Fatty. The day finally came. Mummy, do you think Lucky and Fatty will be there to greet me at the door? Asked Ruby. Mum gave a little laugh. Maybe. Ruby skipped to the door and rang the bell. As usual, a white pasty-faced woman opened the door and smiled. Ruby looked down, hoping to hear a soft patter of feet and her two chicken friends. She didn't and looked around as she entered the flat. Hi, Auntie Daisy. Where are Lucky and Fatty? Asked Ruby as she looked around. Um, they've, they've gone away, said Daisy as she looked away. Where to? Asked Ruby. Mum sensed that Daisy was trying to hide the truth. Must be back to the kampong, where there's more room to run about and do chicken things, like catch worms and all, said Mum. Yes, back to my old kampong, where there's space for chickens to be chickens, said Daisy. Don't you want to see your new dress? Come, let's try it on. Ruby's face lit up. Yes! The dress looked lovely on little Ruby, and for a moment she forgot all about Lucky and Patty. Till it was time to go home, and Ruby couldn't resist asking once more. Though she was only eight years old, Ruby could tell when adults weren't really telling the truth. Daisy, sensing that Ruby was more intuitive than she had thought and felt she had to tell the truth eventually. My mum cooked chicken curry the other day. Hey, Miss Ruby, have you been checking? Do you feel something pecking? Look down your toes, right under your nose. Something is there just snacking. <laughs>